Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It's been a while. So today I wanted to go ahead and update you guys with another character uh, that is focused on damage over time. It's going to be Caswin Channel Exsanguinate Corrupting Fever. Not to be confused with how a lot of other people are playing Corrupting Fever with a bow uh, or via Spell Slinger. This is Caswell Channeling. Um, this character is far from being complete, uh, has, still has a lot of rough pieces of gear. Right now it's currently probably around 30 Exalt, maybe a little more. 22 of the Exalt is coming from an All's Uprising. Could be replaced with a very simple plus one, plus one Amy. So plus one Strength Gems with plus one Fizz. That's around five Exalt for a decent one. So you absolutely do not need this. With that being said, I'm just going to jump in and start. So this is just going to be a... Oh, actually, I don't have Sextants on. Let me put Sextants on real fast. The additional Density. Right again chaos actually don't want chaos i have really bad chaos right now okay so the other thing that's expensive with this build at the moment uh would be i'm running a awakened chain for an extra chain you don't actually need it it's just big quality of life slash extra clear other than that everything is pretty manageable they coming i would like to state that even though i am using an alls that has like you know it's uh 22 exalt my gems are level like 19 uh and they're not level 21 meaning there's a lot of damage to be gained just from simply leveling up the character uh this character is kind of like the righteous fire build in the sense of it doesn't necessarily have the best single target but the single target is scalable with a lot of currency. This build is focusing more on like map clear um, and having like a smooth mapping experience without the need of explodey, although the ascendancy does have built-in explosion since we're playing glad, which we'll talk more about after this map. Although the explosion is, I wouldn't say it's inconsistent. It's very inconsistent. It's very consistent when you need it. When you need it being, when you need additional uh, damage, if you're killing everything off screen, you don't really benefit from the explode. But when you're doing things like Beyond and Blight um, and just a bunch of other stuff where there's a shit ton of mobs that are constantly spawning, that's when the explodey really kind of picks up. Oh, I don't even know what hit me there. I can't do this just yet. If you saw how I got stunned there, uh, you do gain full stun immunity for using a awakened cast when channeling Ready at level die. five. So here's an example of like the tier 16 mapping experience. Um, this is using a awakened chain. So that is minus one damage link, but majority of our damage does come from our corrupting fever. Uh, you'll notice I'm taking quite a bit of damage here. That's because degens are pretty strong against the build. So I do take quite a bit of damage from degen and I haven't so like 100% fixed my recovery yet. I have very good recovery when mapping because of 2% life on kill. But against bossing, we have okay sustain, but nothing crazy against DGEM. Um, I'll try to worry about this in the future and get some more life regen our, our, on our gear. Um, but it's not really a big deal right now because it's more focused for mapping. Okay, so now let's go ahead and talk about the character, the build, pretty much everything else. So we use Exsanguinate, uh, level 19 right now, the higher the level, the better, uh, with Cast Wind Channel or Cast Wild Channeling, Cyclone, Awakened Chain, Brutality. Um, this one's actually big, so this is three Exalt. Um, the reason why I put emphasis on the Awakened level five Brutality is it gives you a chance to deal Crush, which lowers their physical resistance, which actually increases damage over time, unlike overwhelming physical damage reduction. Um, so this is actually a pretty big damage increase for your single target. 
It also means that you can remove your Anoint from Vanquisher, which I still have, uh, for something in favor of just more damage. And then Infuse Channeling. Now your standard 4 link will look like this. This would be your 4 link setup, which is Exsanguinate, Cast While Channeling, Cyclone, Awaken Chain, and or well, Chain. And then you go Infuse Channeling as your 5th link, because that triggers Physical Infusion, which actually increases the damage of your Corrupting Fever, and increases the damage of your Exsanguinate, while also giving you Physical Mitigation. Um, then, for your 6th link, you go with Awaken Brutality. Now, the reason why I'm not 6th linking my Corrupting Fever is because, number 1, a 5 link gives me good damage because of Infusion. Number 2, um, Awaken Brutality in here makes it so the Exsanguinate and the Cyclone both have a chance of applying the Crush, whereas in this setup here on my gloves, you can see my gloves are not very good. I basically just used a Essence of Delirium to get 30% more damage um, with something usable, crafted, you know, increased damage or leeching and slammed it. I was trying to see if I could get plus two duration because then I can have Corrupting Fever, which is 19 out of 21 right now. This is majority of my damage um, would be, so it'd be 21. Then from the Cold Iron Point, it would be 24. And then with the plus two, it would be 26, and then you can use a level 3 Empower, level 4 Empower. Anyway, though, uh, I've also got Brutality here with Swift Affliction and Efficacy. Efficacy would be replaced with Empower when you get a better Empower, or like, when so I, sorry, once you actually get one. Um, belt is just standard Life Res Belt, nothing special here. Um, could definitely be upgraded with a Stygian. I'm using Stampede right now to basically make it so our Cyclone is fixed at our current movement speed. I do think that with the Ascendancy, you could go Challenger Charges and drop Stampede for like really good boots. Just like even Life Res Boots would free up a lot. Um, so this is a nice, interesting option. You do get an extra Anoint by using these boots if you ditch Lab Enchant. So pretty interesting. Um, here we've got Pride, Determination, Tempest Shield, and Enlighten. If you're not running Enlighten, you will probably drop Tempest Shield. And for our chess piece, I literally went on PoE Trade and just searched two green, two blue, two red with spell suppression and life. Um, I got lucky with the life regen bonus there. I can definitely get a way better chest. I just haven't really thought about what I'm crafting for this character yet. So this is just what we're going with. Um, this is putting us right now at, with Molten Shell on, 20,000 armor and 6,000 evasion without the Jade. With the Jade, we're 10,000 evasion. I'd also like to mention we do blind targets on hit. So if anything is melee on me, it's blinded from the Cyclone. Uh, even though we don't have a crazy amount of accuracy, we do hit like, I don't know, six times a second. So there's a good chance it's blinded if it's next to me. We also have 100% spell suppression. Um, we do have 94% spell suppression when we're not full life. So I'm still trying to get a little bit extra. I can't do this just yet. So this ring has vulnerability on it. Vuln is pretty much just for damage. And you'll notice I have minimum frenzy. Um, one minimum frenzy plus two is three. That's quick math. So three triggers the permanent frenzy uh, for outmatch and outlast, which gives you a lot of physical damage here. We're going to have to say sorry to this guy after. I'm sorry, boys. I'm a terrible person. This other ring is simply to uh, fill in uh, resistance and life. I do have minimum endurance charge on it. It actually just happened to be there. What I was going for was full uh, endurance charges for outmatch and outlast. And I was trying to figure out how to get them. Uh, I care a lot about boss sustain. So I went with enduring focus, which is chance to gain endurance charge each second while channeling. Sadly, I thought this would have 100% uptime because it's basically like every four seconds you get an endurance charge. But I've had times where it just falls off, which feels really, really bad. So the fix to that is... Either A, I go with an Enduring... Did I say Enduring Composure? I don't know what I said before. I meant to say Enduring Composure, which is when you get hit, you gain an Endurance Charge every second for four seconds. Um, so that is probably more sustainable than what I have right now. Otherwise, the other option is getting like two Endurance Charge duration rolls on my jewels as Implicits, because that bumps me to like 12 seconds. And I mean, that would be really unlucky to not gain endurance charge that the uh, that entire time so that's another thing other than that over here we've got flesh and stone with maim to trigger the bonus damage there uh, and i've got level one vitality here 
The reason for the level one vitality is I snagged this bad boy for one exalt, which is a watcher's eye with increased damage while using pride and damage leashed as life uh, while affected by vitality. So this is just global damage leech, meaning it does work for Exsanguinate. So Exsanguinate does give us a little bit of leech for single target, which is really nice. Then over here in my helmet, I've got Arrogance Malevolence for the All's Uprising and War Banner with a level one clarity. The level one clarity pretty much just helps us for sustain um, since we're running on a very low mana cost. Then over here, I've got Molten Shell, Frost Blink with Life Tap. A lot of players ask why uh, I use Frost Blink. The reason for Frost Blink is it's a movement skill that allows you to use it while you're channeling still. So you can just blink around. To talk a little bit about some uh, mechanics that are commonly asked on the stream, Cyclone only costs four mana at a six link. The only time it costs more is if you want to squeeze extra single target, you could drop Exsanguinate and run Reap and then drop Chain and run uh, Swift Affliction. That takes your mana from four to six because Swift Affliction actually affects Cyclone. So to do that, you would want to have a... I can't do this just yet. Over here at the bench... You can do non-channeling or channeling skills have minus three total mana cost. This should like completely fix it 100%, right? Because my current cost is four. So having a six cost with minus three would put it at three. And I can sustain four mana cost with no mana investment anywhere. Except aura effect scaling and shaper. But shaper also gives us 1% life per second. Now to squeeze in all the auras on what we're running. I have reservation mastery here with the pretty much the full wheel except for aura effect here, which is not actually aura effect, that's toxic, aura area effect. Uh, and over here, we grab uh, charisma. Then I decided to go with the increased damage for each of your aura or herald skills affecting you. I would have taken the increased effect of auras, but if you read, the increased effect of auras is effect on you, and most of my auras affect enemies, so that does not actually work for like pride, uh, my banner, flesh and stone, so that's why we go with the increased damage, which is pretty good. Starting uh, with the Ascendancy, you go Blood in the Eyes right away, which gives you enemies main by you take 10% increased Fizz and chance to blind. Um, oh, it's blind. Oh, against bleeding enemies. So yeah, that's fine because we chance to bleed as well. Then down here, you get Gratuitous Violence, which is 20% more physical damage over time and the occasional pop that you saw. Then we go for Outmatch and Outlast and go for our Minimum Frenzy and our Endurance Charge Generation. And then you have Pain Forged, or you can go with Arena Challenger. Now, on top of that, we're also running um, 25 Spell Block with 37 Block. This is Full Block, not Glancing Blows. And we are 78, 78, 79 res um, from the tree over here, mainly just from Soul of Steel and Prismatic Skin. Uh, I want to bump or buff the life up to like a little bit over, maybe like 6.5k would be really nice and really ideal. Um, and then we get our nice occasional Molten Shell as well. It's like 3.5k, yeah, 4k armor uh, or, or block, which is really nice. Uh, to cover the leveling and what I did, from right at the beginning, you get, um, you get like, I think it's Shattering Steel. I don't remember. It's one of the Lancing skills or Steel skills. You're just going to use that until you can get Exsanguinate. Then you're going to go Exsanguinate with Exsang Exsanguinate Trap, Multi-Trap for leveling. Uh, remove Multi-Trap for the boss, since Multi-Trap kind of sucks for bossing. You use that all the way up to level 38. At level 38, you can literally start right away with Cast While Channeling, Cyclone, um, Chain, and Exsanguinate. And then you'll have a 4-Link Corrupting Fever, which is Corrupting Fever, Brutality, Swift Affliction, Efficacy. Remember that... <clears throat> your Exsanguinate will take your life, or Cyclone will take MP, and your Corrupting Fever will automatically refresh when you're Cycloning because you spend life to use Exsanguinate. So it all goes together really well. And for leveling, you can always just level your Vitality and use like a Stone Golem as well. There is a potential thing I want to do in the future where I basically want to cut everything from here and try focusing on the left side of the tree, but I just, I don't know, I have to POB it more and play around with it because then I get hit with int requirements and dex requirements, have less spell suppression, but I have more net regeneration. So I'm not really sure. Uh, like I said, the build is still kind of in theory right now. It's just really fun and thought I should share it with you guys. So that's pretty much about it. 
hope you guys had a wonderful time hope you guys enjoyed yourselves if you liked the video don't forget to like share and subscribe and don't forget you can catch me streaming live every day but sundays at twitch.tv slash pox slash pox take care everybody